What's going on, Grace family? Welcome to my YouTube channel, God Gives Grace Ministry. Thank you for stopping in. We are still on 50 Days of Prosperity, and we are on day 26. So we are almost, we are, we are over halfway, and we, we are just knocking these out. And I, I pray that you guys are finding some value in the things that I say. If you disagree with, with, with some of it, that's okay. Take, take what you want. Eat it, eat and spit the and spit the fat out. But I just pray that your life is starting to change. That you start to look at money and wealth and prosperity the way the Bible looks at it a little bit different than you started 26 days ago. And that's all I'm trying to do. Just get you to look at what the Bible says. It'll get you to, to think a little bit outside the box that God do want us to prosper. But there's things that we have to do. And we have to have the right heart. And that prosperity is not just for us. It's for those that we come in contact with. Be a reflection of Christ. Christ, everybody he came into in contact with, they prospered from it. They, they, he blessed them with healing. He blessed them with great words. He, he blessed them. And that's what we need to do. So today I got a, uh, a letter that Kenneth Copeland had wrote to the church that was that God had downloaded to him and this was uh 2011 so I'm gonna read this and think about this for 2021 I'm gonna change it and put it on 2021 because I still think it's applicable for today and it's about our source of supply day 26 is about our source of supply Remember, I kept saying, God is our source. He is our source. It's not our jobs. It's God. He's our source, and he has given us the ability to create wealth, and he's the one that supernaturally makes it work for us. And he adds no sorrow. So let me read this. What about... 2021, word from the Lord to Brother Copeland in November 11th, 2010, but we're going to change it to 2021. Now, what about 2021? What is in store? What is God saying about it? It will be a time of changes. It will be the best times and it will be the worst times. The biggest amount of change will come in the harvest. What is harvest to one man is judgment to another. One because both of them are the manifestation of seed. Seeds grow up and becomes. And when the wages of sin or the harvest of sin is death, you just say with it. You just stay with it and it will kill you. The sower sows the word. Well, the harvest of that is abundance and plenty. The hundredfold return. And here is what I heard the Lord say. This is Kenneth Copeland. I believe he is a man of God. I might not agree with everything. But I still believe that he has great, great teaching and he helps people. So I would never call him a false teacher. For those who exist on compromising the word and, ex and, and sit, insist on it, I am not talking about the word. I mean, that is what they do all the time. Sin or sin, you understand. That is what they do best. But I am talking about people who have an alliance to the Lord Jesus Christ. Born again children of God who continue and exist on compromising the word. Oh yes, Brother Copeland. I know the Bible says that, but you just don't understand my situation. Oh yes, Brother Copeland. Yes, I know the Bible says that, but you don't know I be, you don't know. I believe it will be all right with the Lord. 
those who insist and persist in disobedience and compromising the, of the word, whatever you compromise to keep, you will lose it. And the difference is in 2021, in many cases, it will take from you right before your eyes. And of course, it is not God, God who takes it from you. It's the devil. He is the thief. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God is not taking things away from you. The devil takes them and blames it on God. He will get, he will get preachers to preach that to you, but it isn't true. I've been saying it over and over again. again. God is a giver, giver, giver. The devil is a taker, taker, taker. God is a good God. The devil is a bad devil. <laughs> now, for those who insist on keeping the love commandment at any price and those who insist on living by faith and giving God praise and glory, everything is going to be all right. That is what I heard the Lord say. Everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Straighten up. Don't look to the government for your supply. Don't look to other people for your supply. No, no. Pastors, don't look to your congregation for your supply. Jesus is our source. Hallelujah. The blessing of Abraham is our supply. And what was that, that blessing? He will bless us and cause us to be a blessing. Praise God. The word is our supply. Amen. Now to walk in that. Oh my goodness. You are going to have to pay attention. You are going to have to listen on purpose. Take time to pray and listen to God. Jesus said, I only say those things I heard my father say. And I only do those things I see my father do. Note that should be all of us the same way. Now, what we see someone else do or hear someone else say, we take a message someone preaches we take the written word of God as the very word of Jesus, the very word of the living God. Amen. It is God speaking to me. But there are moments in time when you need to just hush and quit trying to make up and do all your praying on your own and be quiet and say, sir, what should I say at this moment? What should I do? My ears are open and my eyes are open. I am listening. I felt like this was a good letter to read because it simply just says for the household of faith, it's going to be all right. Not just in 2011, but in 2021. If you hold faith, hold fast to the words of God, your faith shall not fail you. Everything is going to be all right. Take these truths. Take the word of God as absolute. Read it. Pray upon it. Ponder it. And it will work for you. It work, It's alive. It's living. It can't do nothing but work for you. It compels you. It guides you into all truth. Our source of supply is God. Don't look to the government for your supply. Don't look to other people for your supply. Even though God will cause people to give in, to give unto you, you don't have to go begging. God knows how to get money to you. Don't look to your congregation for your supply. Jesus is our source of supply. The blessing of Abraham is our source of supply. That blessing is upon us. The word is our source of supply. My God is the source of all my supply. Philippians 4.19 
this must be ingrained in our thinking, especially during an economic times like this, like what we're going through. God is our supply. God will not see you begging bread. He will not leave you alone. He will not leave you hungry. If there's a will, there's a way. Just have patience and lean on God. Settle this today. God is my source. Source means to be point of origin. The beginning place where something can be traced back to. Supply is just a provision. Inventory, stock. Our source of supply is the point of origin for the fulfillment of all our needs. God is there for us. Remember Philippians 4.19. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My God will give you all you have need of from the wealth of his glory in Christ Jesus. In the Amplified, same scripture, my God will liberally supply, fill to the full, your every need according to his riches and glory in what? Christ Jesus. So you need to settle this today, that Jesus is your source of your supply. The blessings of Abraham is the source of your supply. The word of God is a source, is the source of your supply. God is your source of your supply. I told you it's gonna be a short video today, but God is for you. Who could be against you? He is our supply for everything we will ever need. I see you tomorrow on God's good grace ministry. And once again, God is for you. Who could be against you?